When looking at these two major changes, as I said, I, I can see a lot of changes to take place. Uh, but but uh, from technological perspective and, and economic perspective, these two dominant ones, uh, digitalization and uh, creation of bioeconomy, those are, those are areas where Europe has good assets. Europe has potential in, in, in both of these sectors. Uh, the question is how to take benefit from those resources, how to develop these resources in the best possible way in the, in the, in the future. Uh, and that's why I'd like to see the, the European leaders to speak about the digital single market, which is necessary for creating digital future for Europe, for Europe. and then maybe uh, to speak about uh, the European bioeconomy or, or European market for uh, bioeconomy. Because, because that market is not yet there. Market has to be created exactly in the same way as we created uh, a right kind of market for, for mobile technologies in, in the 1990s. Many of you have read uh, Malcolm Gladwell's books, Goliath uh, and... Uh, and uh, what else? But, but I, I was very much impressed uh, uh, his book titled Outliers. Uh, in that book, Malcolm Gladwell an analyzed why countries, governments, individual companies, regions, and even individuals, why they are successful. What are the factors behind successful performance uh, uh, in many uh, sectors. And he looked back to history, modern industrial history, and he made conclusions which I will put into five, five uh, requirements uh, that has to be able to be met in order to, get, to, to become successful. For the first, he said, you need right timing. It's, uh, it's quite often uh, said that good business leaders are good leaders because they have special capacities. That is only partly true. I think timing is even more important. It's, so, it's not a coincidence that, that, uh, that many of the richest people in the world in the 19th century were born 19, in, in, the, in the 19th, 1830s and 1840s. Why? Because railways came true and the breakthrough in the railway system took place uh, uh, in the middle of the uh, uh, 19th century. And those people born just at that time had best potential to take benefit from that. And they were not the best, most successful uh, uh, business leaders were not um, in railway business itself. Carnegie, Rockefeller, and many others. They were not railway, in, in railway business itself but they had capacity to integrate railways into, in the case of Carnegie, into the steel industry, and in the case of Rockefeller, into the oil industry. And when looking at the potential of both digital technologies and, and, and bio sector, I think we have a lot of uh, things to learn from those cases. Because, because what made Carnegie big in the steel industry was that he was able to understand that that steel business was old-fashioned, in that time even, it was old-fashioned, he was able to integrate that, uh, that economy, old, actually old economy, he was able to integrate that into railway systems, but in the same time he was able to integrate that into, into, uh, into uh, chemical industry and, and uh, uh, other technologies. So he was able to combine different, different uh, 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 sectors, technological sectors into each other. And actually, uh, actually, Rockefeller did exactly the same. Oil industry that was started in Pennsylvania, he went there. He didn't understand anything about oil industry, but he understood that there is huge potential with this, and he was clever enough to integrate that into, into the railway system and, again, chemical industry and uh, other sectors, and made a, made, made a very fortunate business, business uh, structure. So, so the, the, the timing for that was perfect because technological breakthrough had happened, uh, invention had uh, taken place, but applications were not yet there. And the same with, uh, 
Steve Jobs or, or Bill Gates. It's, it's not poor coincidence that, that those guys became rich exactly uh, in the same time, or roughly in the same time. The reason is that when ICT revolution took place and when these revolutionary inventions were made, they, were, they had the right time to become industrial leaders in, 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 in that new context. So, right timing, that is very important. Um, let's look at uh, timing for bioeconomy. Is, is the timing perfect now? Absolutely. If you look at Europe's uh, challenges, what we need in Europe? We need, uh, we need uh, sustainable solutions, yes. We have uh, agreed that we will reduce our, our uh, CO2 emissions uh, uh, by uh, 80% uh, by 2050. And we have two milestones by 2030, 40% reduction, uh, 2040, uh, 40, uh, 60% reduction, and then the ultimate goal, 80% uh, 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 reduction by 2050. It's, it's a huge, huge uh, objective, uh, uh, for, for, uh, ambitious objective for, for Europeans. But in order to succeed in that, bioeconomy has to be integrated into our policies. And that's why, like Mark said, this uh, update of our strategy is so critical, because that strategy has to be integrated in that, with, with that big picture. Uh, secondly, timing is correct because we need new jobs and new, new, new business opportunities. Europe needs new comparative advantages in, in the world economy. We cannot go back. We have to understand that we have lost certain comparative advantages in the global economy. We have to create new ones instead of those lost ones. And bioeconomy provides a lot of uh, opportunities. So, so timing is perfect. That first requirement of uh, Mr. Uh, Gladwell is there. Secondly, he said you need revolutionary technologies. In this sector, technological revolutions are, are needed. The present technologies are not sufficient enough to, to, to make that happen. We have to be able to... To, 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 to create new technologies, and especially we have to understand how to integrate different technologies into, to, together. I'm going to speak uh, about one uh, major uh, uh, investment in Finland. The biggest ever forest industry investment is going on just now in Finland. And it's not anymore called forest industry plant. It's called bio plant. And the idea is that they integrate different Technologi technological solutions together in a way that this plant is, is, uh, is uh, able to, to provide uh, uh, or, or to produce uh, uh, traditional um, uh, forest industry products, but in the same time chemicals and energy, energy as, as well. And, and they don't know yet what the products are going to be, but they know that they have capacity to meet future uh, targets. For the third Gladwell says that in addition to, to right timing and revolutionary technology, you need risk-taking capacity. And that is difficult to be understood in Europe. Because we believe that future has to be predictable. We have to be able to guarantee for people that your life is secured. And if you want to make innovation, forget the idea that life will be secured. Because there is no innovation if you are not ready to accept risk. Risk uh, or innovation without risk is a mission impossible. There is no innovation which will be based on non-risk uh, option. No way. And I think this is very difficult to be understood in Europe. Most politicians in Europe, for example, they speak about innovation and they guarantee that we are in favor of innovation. But the second sentence after that is, we don't want to have any kind of risk. People have to live in non-zero risk environment. And there is a conflict with these two. So we have to accept risk in order to, to get things to be changed. For the fourth, uh, right kind of skills and talents. And if you look back at these paradigm shifts that have taken place in the world earlier, new sk skills and talents are very, very critical. And, uh, and I will speak about what kind of talents we, and skills we need in the future, but we have to understand that we cannot do this change with our present 
uh, educational systems and, uh, and uh, present capacities to create talents. And finally, uh, Gladwell says that you need the right kind of ecosystem. That is what I spoke already in the beginning. We were able to create a good ecosystem for mobile technology to grow. Now our challenge is to create the right kind of ecosystem for digital solutions to grow and the right kind of ecosystem for, for bioeconomy to, to be realized. So this is, this, is, this is the major challenge. And I think this Gladwell's checklist is very good when you start looking at bioeconomy opportunities. These five, five, five uh, points on the, on the agenda. 